Hey Sources and fans, it's Gloyd here. Today I want to talk about the dual stick setups for the Ultimate 6DOF experience. I will be covering joystick brands, optimal joystick positions, software on the T16000M, optimal control setups in Star Citizen, and an important dual stick flight tactics. So the first thing you obviously need is two joysticks. Right now, two Thrustmaster T16000Ms are the best bang for your buck joysticks at the moment, which I highly recommend. From what I can tell you, you can actually buy the left and right joysticks together as a combo deal. If you have money to spare, Verpal and VKB offer great dual stick solutions as well, but you will be spending substantially more. So now the next important part of using a joystick is positioning. The optimal position to hold your joystick is with your arm and forearm to be at a 40 to 45 degree angle. This will greatly reduce the amount of fatigue you will experience. In order to achieve this, a few companies such as Monster Tech offer table mounting and chair mounting solutions. Personally, I use a Volair Sim cockpit, so it came with plates I could drill to mount my joysticks to. Even if it means taping your joystick to a bar stool, it's worth it. Now to use my target profile, you need to download the dual stick linear FCF in the description below from Google Drive. Once you've got that downloaded, go ahead and head to your target GUI once that loaded, we're going to want to go to Edit Configuration, and then we want to find the location where that's installed. Then we want to go to Target Profiles. Um, it might be there if you downloaded it there, but you're going to want to go ahead and click on it right here. You're going to want to hit Next, Next, Finished, and then Yes. And then it should show up here. Once it's here, you want to click on this, and then click run. And this is gonna take a while the first time, but after a while, it should go very quickly like this. Now it's time to boot Star Citizen. Now that you got Star Citizen booted, you wanna to go to Arena Command, and then you wanna to go to Single Player, Vandal Swarm. We're gonna go ahead and change this to Dying Star so you don't get blind. Launch game. All right, once we're in game, we're gonna go ahead and hit Escape, Options, we're going to key binds at the upper right, and then down at the lower right, we're going to go ahead and hit that arrow key on mouse and keyboard. Now we're going to go to the left side, hit advanced control customization. Then we're going to go to the very top here at view. We're going to remove everything here. We don't want this to mess with interaction mode at all. I suggest if you need to use an MFD, use your mouse and keyboard. Make sure it's in arm's reach. Then you want to go to flight movement. On our pitch axis, this is going to be our right T16000 this is, or whatever joystick you have. This is going to be up and down on that right joystick. And then on yaw, this is going to be left and right on your right joystick. And then roll. So if you're using two T16000s, this is going to be your right stick's twist. If you're using pedals like I do, I've got this actually on my left stick. But for simplicity's sake, just put it on your right stick unless you've got pedals. Then space brake is a very important part of trying to slow down, making sure you don't go out of bounds, or if you just need to stop from crashing into something. I would map this. I've got this mapped to my left T16000 on the top right side. And then on the speed limiter, I've got this on my left T16000's hat button. So that's the up and down hat button for these two. Now decouple is also very important part of flying. I actually use this very kind of defensively. If I start to G-lock, I'll hit this. That allows my ship to slide a little bit more and allows me to survive from G-locking, essentially. It's, it allows you to kind of regain your consciousness um, before you slip into G-lock. And I've got that on my left stick's top left button. Then strafe up and down. This should be your left stick's um, twist. Now if you're using pedals, you could put this, you know, on the forward and back and then use pedals for strafe, strafing forward and back, but it's just prep. For strafe left and right, I've got this as the left sticks left and right. On throttle forward and back, since this is just simply dual joysticks only, this is going to be your forward and back on your left joystick. As far as afterburner, I've got this as my left sticks trigger. So we're going to go ahead and move on to targeting. So select target under reticle. Depending on what you're using, um, I'm using a Verpal Warbird so it's a little bit different, but if you're using a T16000 you're going to want this to be your 
right sticks top hat button cycle friendly targets you're gonna want this to be your right sticks down hat button and you would only map one of these and then cycle targets this is gonna be your right sticks right hat button this is gonna be your right stick left hat button here and then target nearest hostile that's going to be your right sticks top left button and then sub targets um, I would map this this is more or less for subsystem targeting if you're fighting like a vanguard you're gonna want to cycle two on the keyboard or, or map it and the idea is you want to target those engines so to enter scanning mode I actually use the right sticks middle button and then I map the activate scanner to the trigger and then also do it for radar ping since I'm using a warbird I've got an extra dual stage trigger so that's why that's there but put these together on button one on the right stick and again that's only gonna happen if you've got this toggled and then increase radar angle decrease it that's gonna be right stick um, top and bottom hat buttons for target hailing ignore that or unmap it even Mining, um, you guys can do what you want. I've got this set up a little bit differently. I, but uh, you can just ignore that for now. You can kind of find your own, what you want to do for mining. Uh, turret, same thing. It's probably mapped. It looks like it's actually mapped to my left joystick. So just ignore that for now. You really should be using a mouse and keyboard for turrets. Weapons. So depending on what you do, I would suggest that you guys put this on everything on button one. I would not put it on a dual stage. Sometimes you, you forget to click it or it's just extra wear and tear on that second stage. Not, not worth it. Just put it on one. As far as missile lock, you're going to want this on the right uh, six right side button. Same thing with missile launch. And as far as defensive, I've got this on my left T16000's left hat button and then right hat button. Now I've got shields on here as well, but for the most part, you can just ignore that. That's on my Warbird. Unfortunately, you don't have a lot of uh, access to this, so I would use your mouse, your keyboard. Essentially, numpad allows you to raise and lower your shield facings. Power, I wouldn't have anything mapped for now. If you really want this, you can do voice attack or something like that. Flight radar, you can ignore that. We're going to go ahead and uh, for the most part that should be almost everything, but we want to go down to interaction all. And we want to clear everything out of here out of the joystick. And the reason I say this is what will happen sometimes is you won't be able to move the cursor to overclock. And it's because the game is thinking, okay, are we using the joystick or are we using the mouse? And if you've got any type of, oh, I guess drift in your joysticks, it'll pick it up and won't let you use this. So just get rid of this. It's imprecise. It's just not practical. Ignore that. So yeah, that's pretty much the setup for Star Citizen's dual joystick setups. So in this video, I'm fighting Vissel Red, and he's in an arrow, so he's in a lighter ship. So what I'm going to do, since I'm a dual joystick user, is I'm going to start strafing his direction. Because I want to minimize that pip deflection. He's a smaller target. He's got only one shield. And if I can minimize it, I can pop him pretty quickly. So I'm strafing his direction. And he pops. Now, looks like we've got a Hornet coming up here. So what I'm probably going to do is we're probably going to do our merge pass. I'm going to try and intercept. He's probably going to try and go past me. So I'm going to try and cut him off and get some side shots on him. So we'll see here. Poor Super Hornet. And I got him. And here comes Tatsumo. He is a very, very good pilot. So I've got to be very, very careful. He's got more guns than I do. And that can really hurt a Gladius, especially the sledges. So I'm trying to go as evasive as possible. I'm spiraling on him. I'm strafing into him, trying to get behind him. He's doing a very good job of keeping me back there. I get some side profiles, so I'm, I'm twisting. I'm essentially rolling, strafing down. And I'm strafing up, 
trying to time the, the trigger pulls with one of my rolls. Try and get some hits. And uh, he's really strafing backward, trying to keep me in front of him. I'm really pushing hard. As you can see by the velocity limiter, I'm entering the red zone. He's starting to get on me again. Oop, we, looks like we collided there. Again, trying to get behind him. Got a top shot there. Pounding on me. He's, looks like he probably put his velocity limiter up a little bit. He's got my nose red. There he goes. If you guys enjoyed the video, like, subscribe, and share with your friends. Renegade signing off.